Dividend investing is the easiest way to start building passive income, and over time, it's also very possible to live off that passive income. But living off passive income can definitely take a long time, especially depending on how much you're investing into it. So the whole idea of getting rich quick off dividends can probably just go out the window. And it sucks because aside from the fact that people want to get rich, of course I do as well, but what sucks is that that whole concept keeps people away from investing into dividend paying stocks and ETFs in the first place. But even if you're someone like me who isn't wealthy and is only investing so much into their portfolio, Portfolio, it's still very possible to build a lot of money off passive income with a little just based on the specific stocks and ETFs that you invest into over others. Last year for me, I was able to bring in $257.74 in annual dividends, which was a 36% increase from the year prior, all while only investing $25 a week for the past four and a half years up until the last couple of weeks of December where I moved all the way up to $30. And my portfolio is currently filled with maybe over 20 stocks, but in my last video, I focused on five particular dividend paying stocks. I want to focus more on investing this year, not only for the passive income, but for the overall long-term profit. And even though in the grand scheme of things, I definitely want to have a portfolio that gives me the best of both worlds. If I have the opportunity to make more passive income, then I'm definitely going to take it. Now, aside from the particular positions within the stock market that you decide to invest into, what makes constantly making more in passive income possible is the whole idea of dividend compounding, which is really cool, especially because it's something that you do without really thinking about it. When you invest in dividend stocks, you get paid dividends based on the number of shares you have. And the more you invest, the more dividends you get. If you reinvest those dividends along with what you normally invest, and that's more stocks you can eventually buy, meaning more dividends you earn, and more dividends you can reinvest, and so on and so forth. And that growth gets exponentially larger if the stocks and ETFs that you're doing all this investing and reinvesting into have a history of not only constantly paying out those dividends, but actually increasing them. And with all that in mind, I wanted to look back at those five particular positions that I want to focus more on, see which ones are actually going to benefit me more on the passive income side. Out of the five stocks and ETFs that I want to focus more on this year, NVIDIA was the one that I said I want to invest into the most, primarily because of its share price history, especially over the past five years. I mean, as a matter of fact, if you look at its share price over the past week, I believe it's grown by over or roughly about 10%. And specifically with me, with the little over two shares that I own, I've already made a little over $800 in profit, which is more than I made in any position that I have in my portfolio. And this company does pay a dividend, but even though it does, it's definitely a second thought. Like, check this out. If I were to invest what I normally invest every single week, which is $30 a week, and I invested that strictly to NVIDIA every single week for 10 years, I would make a total of about $22 in dividends over that period of time while averaging a little over $4 per year from that point on. And that isn't really fun, which again, that's why it's a second thought over the capital growth that it can give. But the potential of making more dividends definitely increases when I focus on other companies I picked like Costco and Apple. For the same situation as NVIDIA, Apple would pay me a total of $374 in dividends, while Costco would pay me about $470 in the same period of time while investing that same amount of money. Now, even though I want to make sure that I don't compromise my portfolio by investing into positions strictly because they have a high dividend yield, not being aware that there's a possibility that they can't maintain that, there are still high dividend yielding positions that I wanna invest into strictly for the passive income. For example, although its long-term growth history is pretty horizontal, SCHD is a really cool dividend paying ETF that's constantly been paying its dividends every single quarter to its shareholders, which makes sense because because it's a portfolio focuses on companies that pay its shareholders dividends constantly for over 15 years. And if I were to invest $30 a week for 10 years into SCHD, I would make a total of about $2,833 in dividends and I would average about $590 per year in dividends from that point on, which is really cool. But if we wanna go a little bit higher, we can talk about another company like Realty Income, which I've said many times is probably my favorite monthly dividend in paying stock or ETF or REIT, whatever category, it's probably my number one, especially because it's constantly not only been paying its shareholders dividends, but increasing the dividend payout for the past 31 years. So if I wanted to make a bit more in dividends, I can invest that same $30 a week all into realty income, which will ultimately pay me a total of $4,300 in dividends and would generate me over $900 per year. I can get even bolder than realty income 
which again gets me into the position where I could potentially compromise my portfolio, but I already have a decent amount of shares in this ETF called QYOD. Now QYOD has an insanely high dividend yield of a little under 12%, about 11%, but luckily for me, as I've been holding it for the past maybe two to three years, it's been consistently paid me about 16 cents per month. Now no joke, according to Tip Ranks, the same website I'm using for these other companies I'm talking about, I took that same $30 and I strictly invested into QYOD for the next 10 years, I would make a total of about $11,133.44 in dividends. And from that point on, I would make over $2,600 per year in passive income. Now, my overall capital growth may not be much because it's not really known for that, especially if you look at its all time share price history but the dividends are crazy. So considering that and the really high dividend yield, it's one of those positions that you have to really be careful of because it could potentially be a trap, assuming that they're paying it for a short period of time and then they suddenly can't afford that high dividend yield and they pay a lot less and then their share price goes down and you're losing a lot in passive income and all the money that you invested into it. So it's something you have to be really careful about. But again, as I've said earlier, I've been investing into this position for over two years and I've been paid between 16 and 17 cents every single month since then. Despite the amount that I invest into my portfolio every week seem pretty low in a lot of people's eyes, hopefully you can tell that it's still very possible to start building wealth if you're just patient. And 10 years of investing can definitely go a lot faster than you think. I mean, I've been investing for almost five years. It'll be five years in May. But if you wanna see a better example, check out this video where I talk about how my portfolio did just last year while only investing $25 a week, which might surprise a lot of you guys considering that that's a small amount to invest. But hey, I appreciate you guys watching this video and until next time as always, take care.